Welcome to this edition of Bone End of the Week, where you vote and we break it down. You decide who is the Bone End of the Week. Go to our Twitter page at Tony Michaels Pod. Don't forget to follow us there. You can vote there and don't forget to subscribe on the YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button down below. You can also vote on YouTube. And boy, boy, did Charles did Charles vote this week? Mm-hmm. They voted, and um, it was it was it, 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 it was, was not close. decision. It was not close this week. <laughs> not close at all. I mean, you know, I was uh, I was expecting this outcome, but it was a bit of a blowout. I'll say that. Uh, right. Well, let's let's look at who we had on the list. We had Justice Clarence Thomas, uh, Mark Meadows, and Senator Mitch McConnell. You know, I'm I'm already forgetting why the specific reason why Mitch McConnell's on this. I'm sure it's because he's a fucking. It was about the Roe v. Up. Wade and saying how like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, if we okay. codify Roe and the filibuster, then it would destroy. You know, that's a, right. well, well, you know, you know, that's right, that's right. Because President Biden said yesterday that he would like to see the filibuster carve out an exception to codify Roe v. Wade, and Mitch McConnell's like, "This is the most dangerous thing I've ever heard." Can you imagine if we give back women the rights that they've had for fifty years? This would yeah. be terrible. Like, what the? Can fuck you can you imagine what it would do to the country if we were to force in a stolen justice? <laughs> right. It's almost like the guy is tone deaf and intentionally unwilling to you know he never wants to play fair he'll never do anything that is for the good of the people i mean he and Rand paul have abandoned their constituents in their state they do nothing unless it's for them right absolutely well it's always this this selfish fascist stuff uh, but uh, you know these 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 three candidates kind of like intertwine right like sometimes our candidates they're just it's the individualism of the boneheadedness, right? right? But this week, it all kind of me- melts together. Here you have Mark Meadows on the list with Justice Clarence Thomas, which mm-hmm. Justice Clarence Thomas made the decision about Roe v. Wade, and he went even further to basically say we shouldn't, gay people shouldn't exist to all, yeah. to, to you know to, to the lowest common denominator there. But but we also have Clarence Thomas and Mark Meadows colliding in the bo- world of boneheads this mm-hmm. week where Mark Meadows was on the front stage of the criminality of the Cheeto dust kangaroo coup. And we know that Clarence Thomas's wife, Jeannie Thomas was texting Mark Meadows. Yep. About the, the Cheeto dust kangaroo coup and trying to make Donald Trump, the dictator and the King and justice Clarence Thomas did not recuse himself when making the decision of having that evidence given to the January 6th select committee. So it's like this fucking basket weave of boneheads this week. Yeah, man. I don't know. It's a crazy you shit. might You might say it's a, a basket of deplorables. That's good. That, well, you could say that. I, yeah. I heard Again, an e- there was an email lady that said that one time. She yeah, seems yeah, yeah. to be right about almost she, everything. Dude, if there was anyone who says, doubt me, right. it's Hillary that's Clinton. Right. That's like the, the true doubt me. Ball. That's yeah. right. I wonder that's if that's why they were scared of her emails and she had all that shit in her emails and and they were probably all subject had doubt right. me with the crystal ball. Well, as probably. soon as they read the emails, they were talking about like pizza and oh stuff. And like, oh shit, they figured us out. Like that's what they're like. Oh, we got to attack them. All right, and all right. that's why went after her and Podesta and everyone else about Pizza Gate. Pizza Gate, yeah, the, you know, the basement of a pizza place that didn't exist. No. Um, so let's. I'll show you our boneheads here. Uh, Mark Meadows, Mitch McConnell. So I don't know where. Where do we want to start? Do we want to start with the bitch, the Mitch, or Mitch the yeah, bitch, yeah, whichever? Mitch McConnell. And I, I think because it's pretty simple to uh, know why Mitch McConnell is a fucking bonehead. But right. we'll start there um, really quick. He still. He looks like he's still trending here on um, on Twitter. Is he? So well, I think you know, so. I hope people drag him. Yeah, well, and, and it looks like it's it's his name misspelled wrong, but um, is a bitch. Yeah, well, it I I typed in bitch, and this is what I get. Oh, wow, um, well, makes sense. But we know we know that uh, Leader McConnell, and maybe here's a good um, here's a good graphic. Even though it doesn't have Mitch McConnell on it, um, this mm-hmm. has a lot to do with Mitch McConnell here. Uh, we know the three at the bottom. Gorsuch uh, was seated because Mitch McConnell stole. A Supreme Court seat um, from uh, Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have uh, Gore, uh, uh, excuse me, tear in my beer, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, the rapist (laughs) here. Um, Brett Kavanaugh, who we know he's bought and paid for uh, Mm -hmm. for the Supreme Court. We want to know who paid your debt, Brett. Yeah. And then we have Handmaid's Tale uh, cunt over here, um, Amy Coney Barrett. 
I, I, I'm going to call her a cunt. I don't use that word often, but I think it's yeah. appropriate here where she is one of the votes uh, and Mitch McConnell rammed her down our throat because I really yep. think that's where Mitch McConnell's a bonehead here, where he's saying that that President Biden is dangerous for pointing out pointing out that that what they did with Roe v. Wade was take away rights from women and Congress should act to give that right back to them and codify that right into legislation. He's like, whoa, that's really dangerous to question the fascist bought and paid for institution Mm -hmm. that we made sure existed to take away rights from women, to give women back those rights. That's dangerous shit. Guys, we installed it. It's and they're like, oh shit, no, no, this is you know. I mean, like again, we've talked about this before, which is people within this party are going to realize that when their rights get taken away, they're going to say, oh shit, I was never really part of this party. I was just a political pawn that people used me to make a vote and to get someone in office that they could then do something like appoint a justice on the Supreme Court to make laws that take away my rights. It's just like this fucking never ending cycle where you're putting someone in place who doesn't actually care for you or has an ulterior motive to some long-term goal like Ginny Thomas using most likely her husband as some sort of soapbox and making sure that he votes certain ways on laws once they got the the court to be I mean it's not supreme it's a religious court let's just call it what it is it is a religious court it is not supreme it is inferior but hopefully as time goes on, you know, with uh, with Katanji Brown Jackson, we've got someone with actually some sort of sense of clarity and intelligence on this on this bench that will at least have her her name and her her opinion uh, on the record. You know, well, you know, I, I said this morning, uh, having to observe Fourth of July as Independence Day, realize the the actual signal here where um, Justice Brown Jackson is sworn into the court just days after that same court takes away her rights. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about that for just a second, that she is sworn to a court as the first black woman on that court, which is historic, but historically the just days before they actually took away rights of her bodily autonomy, the same court. Or, or, I mean, like, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, she's married. She has a daughter, you know, like she's, you know, in terms of, you know, her bodily autonomy in terms of having a child, it's like, all right, fine. You know, that doesn't really impact her in that specific way. Obviously, there's a much larger thing that's at play here that will. But she also has a daughter. That's right. Who that and I, sh- I showed that picture home. yesterday. Right, I sh- exactly. I showed the picture yesterday of her daughter. In, in, in their own home, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, shit, this is going to like what, it's you know. It's going to affect, it's how going to do... affect Judge Brown Jackson directly. Right. Um, through her family and what that means for her daughter and depending on what imaginary line they've crossed. It's absolutely right. batshit crazy. Speaking of batshit crazy, um, our other bonehead nominee, Mark Meadows, and we watched this week as the surprise emergency urgent hearing where Cassidy Hutchinson um, testified against Mark Meadows basically was the entire thrust mm-hmm. and Donald Trump, Donald Trump and Mark Meadows have basically been welded at the hip here for yep. the Cheeto dust kangaroo coup for all intents and purposes. Um, you even tweeted out, but this is, I think the reason why you wanted Mark Meadows on the bone of the week, yeah. because it seems like Mark Meadows has really, um, here's the slide that they showed of witness tampering, because that is exactly what this is. This is, this is in the moment. At the live hearing that Liz Cheney at the end put this slide up and they redacted the name. It just says a person here. Mm -hmm. And it says, let me know you have your deposition. Yeah, let me know you have your deposition tomorrow. He wants me to let you know that he's thinking about you. This is that friendship shit. This yeah, monster yeah. friendship loyalty. Shit. Mm-hmm. You know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. He knows you're loyal, Cassidy. Is this person's text here? And you're going to do the right thing when you go into in for your deposition. Now, this apparently this message was sent to Cassidy Hutchinson um, on March seventh. Is that right? This is the second time she. Yeah, was yeah. This post, is right? a second. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't wasn't the one that was before? Because there are two messages that were sent. Um. Right, that they showed, and but, this but one that was one in one... particular, but that one in particular is when she still had the MAGA, MAGA trumped up lawyer, right? Right, exactly. So, um, 
It and was I, just, and it, yeah, and probably at that point is when she said, "Nope, okay, out." It was discovered that the person, the a person, that the the person who was letting her know through this messenger, was revealed as Mark Meadows. Right um, now, I don't know who the messenger is. We don't know who the messenger is. The select committee knows who the messenger is. Right. They know for sure. The messenger know. knows that the select committee knows. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, those details are revealed. Because, like again, you know, they have a producer that is that is setting all this up. He's helping right. them tell a story so that everyone's like, "Oh, the boring C-SPAN." You know, it's like, "Oh, this is this is juicy gossip." Like, what's going on here? Right? These people try to overthrow the government, but like, wait, wait, wait you're saying Mark Meadows is juicy? Come on, don't use Mark Meadows. Okay, and juicy. all right. I'm not trying to say he's juicy. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm trying just to the, say is the, just just. Hit- his witness tampering, that's juicy right, drama. Right, right. Exactly. Like okay. you like not only did we go through this whole thing and be like, oh, Trump was throwing ketchup on the wall and having a tantrum and trying to grab the wheel and choke out the Secret Service agent. You mean there's actual crimes being committed then? Yeah, yeah. I mean, probably reason number one, the main reason why people like Marjorie Taylor Greene are all of a sudden saying that this is like 9-11 and we tried to warn them. Right. And they didn't listen. We tried to warn them that we were gonna, we were yeah. gonna try to. L- we we commit wrote a, coup. a letter saying we were gonna do it. We put it online. Oh my! God. But when I look at this stuff, and I'm like, you know, it is it is well done on the production side, uh, much like our uh, our commentary streaming and that we have for the January six hearings, right? Mm-hmm. Which is done in partnership with Midas Touch and the Midas Media Network. So thank yeah, you so guys go very go much. follow the Midas Touch channel and don't forget yeah. to watch the July hearings. Why we're mm-hmm. why why, but, we're, why we're doing some yeah yeah we might as well just plug yeah. right. But in this regard, you've got this producer who's saying, "All right, this is how we want to tell the story. Like these are all crazy things. We don't want to tell it all at once. We want to you know spread it out. And then after each hearing, or at the end of each hearing, they say." And the in the following the follow up hearing or the following hearings, whatever it might be, you know, you will hear about this. And that's what they did here. Right. So in the the one before this or the two before that, they threw out all the names of the people that were that uh, that said no, that they weren't going to testify, that they weren't going to give a deposition. So she's she's calling them out. And then in this most recent one, she was like, oh, just so you know, we ask everyone if they've been in contact with Trump or any Trump associates. And here are two examples of that right here. They dropped it as anonymous. Everyone's like, oh, shoot, who said it? It's like the who shot JR situation, right? Everyone's trying to figure out who this a person is and who these people that sent it were. And everyone's, you know, everyone's like, oh, got to talk about it. Gotta, what, what happened in the last episode, you know, of this show? What's going to happen in next week's episode? And then they dropped the a little, little spoiler, a little tidbit and say, oh, it's actually Mark Meadows from someone else sending the message to Cassidy Hutchinson about her deposition. And now I wouldn't be surprised if we find out more details about the people that were the, the middlemen, right? The people that were sending the messages on behalf of Mark Meadows, even though Mark Meadows and his camp have denied any sort of wrongdoing. So whether it's Rudy Giuliani or whether it's uh, Stodger Roan or someone else, like, You're talking I, about the text message that we just that we just right saw. exactly. So, I, so I who, like who do you who do who do you think it is? Because I have my theories, um, but I'm I'm not a, a, a <clears throat> particularly sure exactly who it is. I'm um, I think I'm sixty forty. I'm sixty percent on the Rudy side because okay. Rudy's dumb enough to do it, and I'm forty percent on the Stodger Roan side because he's uh he's got enough hubris and he's cocky enough to do it thinking there won't be any repercussions i actually don't believe that it's either one of those Whoa. Uh, i don't i do not believe um because oh, I, think, I see where you're going with i this. think i think the thing is is that there there are um coherent sentences in that message um they're not um too they're not too overt they're a little mm-hmm. smarter about the language that they're using and it would be someone who would actually you know probably talk to mark Meadows, and i doubt I doubt Rudy at that point um, would be talking to Mark Meadows or Stodger Roan be mm-hmm. talking to Mark Meadows. I do, in fact, though, bet that there is one person that to this day is probably still in contact with Mark Meadows. And it's one of the people in this picture. Uh, if you notice here, one of the individuals in the green dress is Cassidy Hutchinson. Okay? Mm-hmm. The other is Kaylee McEnany. Okay? Yeah. 
So, and this is a picture that was taken after the election, apparently, while they were going to Mar-a-Lago. Here's the thing. Donald Trump claims he does not know Cassidy Hutchinson. And he claims mm-hmm. she knows nothing. Even Donald Trump Jr. Uh, it, uh, uh, posted on, on 2 Central something about she's a coffee girl or something. Yeah, yeah. Why would Trump and the Trump team want to make sure that the coffee girl was on the Mar-a-Lago staff to keep her close. Why would she, he want to do that? I don't know. She makes good lattes? Yeah, maybe. But yeah. my guess is my guess is, is she was kept close to Trump because they knew she knew everything. Yeah. They knew she knew everything. And there's another person besides Mark Meadows that knew that she knew everything. And it is one of the people in this picture. Now, I'm not saying that it's I have any evidence other mm-hmm. than this photo right here that they were chummy even after the election, meaning they were still probably chummy up until last week with text messages. Um, I'm just trying to figure out who would be chummy with her, who would be able to write these coherent sentences and not be um, be so avert to, you know, give the mobster type language. Right. And I also am trying to figure out who Mark Meadows could convince to do this type of witness tampering. And I'm betting it's someone who is smarter than you think, but not as smart as they yeah, think yeah. they are. So I'm not saying it's um, Kaylee McEnany, but I am saying um, it is Kaylee McEnany. I don't know. <laughs> Doubt me. Get my crystal ball out. Um, so I, I believe that it's someone uh, much smarter uh, than than uh, Rudy Giuliani or mm-hmm. Stagerone, for that matter. So Mark Meadows is another candidate. But I want to go to the dishonorable mention. Who yeah. did we have that on the dishonorable mention here? Lou Dobbs. Yep. Why did Lou we have Dobbs. Lou? I think I think you had the tweet or the sorry the post that he made on uh, Truth Social uh, oh, okay. a moment ago. Okay. Well, you know, um, Lou. I didn't even know he was still alive. I. To you be, know what? Here, to I, be fair about this, I didn't I even know that he was still alive. Is, I mean, I have I have that same kind of gut reaction whenever I hear someone's name and I go, "There's a lot." Like I have. I I didn't know. I still, thought, well, maybe, maybe, be, maybe, be, just maybe. the heart. I mean, not to say that they had a heart in the first place, <laughs> but I for anyone who it. doesn't know who Lou's, that Lou Dobbs is. He, he's he's like a, a, another version of Donald Trump. Like he's because yeah, yeah. Donald Trump has always wanted to be so many people, right? Like yeah. he longs to be. Well, he Elon shifted, Musk. right? He used to be right. the independent voice on. Yeah, you know, he's a news. racist. He's a fucking racist. Right. Lou Dobbs is a racist, and now he's full on, full oh, on. Oh, he he loves Trump. He loves yeah. to get on his Cheeto dust knee pads. Who Dobbs? And, right. Mm-hmm, who Dobbs? Uh, so Ron Post here fired Fox host Lou Dobbs, and we know he was fired. From Fox News, and I think he has a show on some traitor K- K- yeah, yeah, network now. Yeah. Uh, weighs in with his rational analysis of January six. So here's the uh, here's the post on True Social, and um, that Lou Dobbs posted. The January six committee is a vicious partisan panel of the Marxist Dems' most hateful, ignorant cre- Cretans who are without conscience. Only the hopelessly stupid would believe a word they utter. Here's the thing. He's calling them a panel of Marxist Dems. Not, I, I, I still can't figure this out. Every person who's been part of the administration or that the administration tried to bully, other than the two election workers that they had testified, right. um, have been, I don't know exactly what political party you would call this, Republicans? Mm-hmm. Republicans. Cassidy Hutchinson worked for fucking Ted Cruz and Steve Scalise. Yeah. Then she was put into the White House and soon became the aide to Mark Meadows, who is the fucking who invented the Freedom Caucus inside the fucking house. Now, also, she went to Mar-a-Lago after the administration was what, what thankfully was axed after January 20th when Joe Biden was sworn in. The person who actually deposed in public the other day for the testimony of a Republican aide to a Republican chief of staff was Mm -hmm. a fucking Republican whose name is Liz Cheney, whose father was the vice president of the United States in a Republican administration. These are not Marxists. These are not Democrats. Lou Dobbs has shit for brains, and he definitely is a fucking bonehead. I don't know if you have anything to say, but that's all I know. I'm going to say that this guy is uh, he's whenever I see Lou Dobbs, he's kind of like uh, mashed potatoes 
<laughs> put into a saran wrap. Like right. that's what I feel like he reminds me of. And this guy has really gone from somebody who, well, I mean, he was a shithead the whole time, but he's really gone all the way to the right and extreme to say like, oh, hey, Trump, you know, how do you like your balls tingled? And now, you know, he's trying to push these. What and what I would imagine, he knows. I feel like he's smart enough to know that this shit is all bullshit. But he's pushing this as an attempt to say, well, there is a very, very uh, uh, small but but riled up group that support Trump that will push my podcast numbers for the Great America Show. And this is good stuff. This is great stuff to push on Truth Social. And I don't know if he actually believes it. Maybe he does after long enough of hearing himself talk. But I do I do think that Lou Dobbs is an idiot. He's a fucking moron uh, in that sense of like being well, smart it, enough to know what the what the like what this was. He's always still denigrated. Trying to push it. He's always denigrated migrant workers. He's always denigrated brown people in this country. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he, he definitely hates immigration. This guy is a fucking racist. He's always been a racist. He mm -hmm. will continue to be a racist. And he's a fucking liar. He's a yeah. goddamn liar. And it's no more appropriate that he would spew these lies over on Donald Trump's fraudulent social media site with the name True Social. Right. It really is fucking just batshit crazy that that is the world that we live in. It's fucking ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So fuck Lou Dobbs. Fuck him. <laughs> um, let's go to the Alpha Cuck of the Week because I, I kind of chose because you wanted to know who the uh, DM and Alpha Cuck was. And mm -hmm. I, I recommended Lou Dobbs and this guy. Can you yeah. tell us who, who, who this weirdo is? Because he does. Yeah. He, this you picked out. You picked out one of the weirdest fucking pictures. of. I picked out, I believe, the best photo it that is. really shows Tim Pool. Now, yes, Tim Pool, uh, you might not notice who he is has but he ever if you been on our list i don't think he's been on the no boat yeah list. i had to make this, this photo time. this morning okay good. so if you if you just take your finger and you just cover his forehead and imagine it's a beanie that would be tim pool you know tim pool oh he's That's... the guy that wears the black beanie exactly yeah, okay. now what it every you know from his beginning uh at vice you know he was uh Occupy New York, like all of that stuff that he was involved in. And then he has gone all the way, you know, to the right, you know, far fucking right, where he's been pushing ideas uh, that are racist. The guy's a racist. Well, you know, he he's a fascist. He he he's very much, uh, you know, he's pro Kyle Rittenhouse and all these other wannabe uh, fucking. But don't you think Tim Pool's kind of like pre Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan? Don't you yeah, feel that no, way? To I mean, some like extent? he's kind of if if Joe Rogan because didn't he claims take... like I used to be a liberal, but he never really fucking was. Right. I mean, if Tim Pool is like if Joe Rogan didn't take steroids, all right? That's <laughs> what that's what Tim Pool is. Tim Pool has a podcast. Wears a beanie. He's got. He actually posted this picture, by the way. He's he got a. He's got it. like an old school, uh, like gun and a knife. Like he would actually what use. Do you, those what do you things. mean, like? Like he's like if you look him? up an Im if you look no like on his in his podcast studio like if you look up an image of Tim Pool online oh. and you'll see in the background he's got this like old like revolutionary era revolver or gun you know like mm -hmm. you put fucking a pellet in and you know your your gunpowder and then an actual sword right like you have like a you know when the gun fails the sword's the next oh. thing he's got him as a cross on his wall nothing says alpha studio. nothing says alpha cuck more than a sword right. and a gun is on a cross yeah. in your wall jesus christ exactly uh, the reason the reason why i suggested him as the alpha cuck is here's why he he tweeted this yesterday he said tomorrow starts maga month and i hope y'all or he tries to be country, but he's not. Are ready to change your profile pics to American flags? I've got mine ready. <laughs> so he's so part of Maga Month apparently is to um, put the American flag behind you because America nothing says nothing says traitor more than posting the American flag of a country yep. you tried to tried to overturn right, um, right, right he says i know all the major corporations that benefit from u.s tax law will want to celebrate this country right i don't know what he what is the fuck does he mean by that i don't even know like what, it, what does that have to do with maga month i, I know, know all the major corporations that benefit from u.s tax law will want to celebrate this country right what does that fucking i don't i don't, I don't understand know. there see that's a lot of code talk right 
it's a lot of code talk over on the right right now because right. they're losing their minds because really honestly they are afraid that 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 they're really de- their heroes here their maga heroes are going to start getting rounded up and not only is the truth going to be told at the January 6th select committee, right. but it's also going to be told in open court, in open federal court, when these charges and these indictments and these trials start. One of the first trials we're going to see for seditious conspiracy is scheduled for December uh, for the Proud Boys. I'm sure it'll get pushed because of superseding indictments here. That's my guess. I think I think we actually won't see mm-hmm. a trial for seditious conspiracy into the summer, maybe even the fall of next year. Right. So we're probably a year out from seeing a trial of anyone. Uh, yeah, Proud yeah. Boys, Oath Keepers, Eastman, uh, Clark, Meadows, Trump himself, Stodger Roan, uh, Steve Bannon. I think we're almost a year out from any kind of trial that would happen for seditious conspiracy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the, but these people are really starting to freak out because it really is. They're starting to feel that that these the conspirators and overturning our government are going to start to feel the cold steel of the handcuffs on their right. arms here soon. Um, well, I think also because you know, yeah, they they are very much kind of worrying themselves. We saw it again, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene earlier being like, "Oh, we tried to warn you. You know, you guys didn't do it." It's very much like kind of like victim blaming in this sense. And I think these people are, are are realizing that, oh, shit, the January 6th committee that everyone laughed off as a joke is actually coming to the table and showing all of the shit. They are showing the video. They're showing the depositions. They're showing the audio. They're showing the transcripts. They're showing the emails. They're showing the handwritten notes. Like, they've got the receipts, and they're showing it. And now people within the party are like, oh, shit. Um, uh. Yeah. So like, we're not gonna, we don't want Trump anymore, you know? And I think their very tardy or late approach to dealing with Trump is not going to save them. It's still going to cost them their position, uh, their reputation, whatever it might be, because they, you know, they doubled down before to be like, it wasn't an insurrection. It was just a tourist visit. Trump didn't do anything wrong. He didn't incite anything. And then now they're like, oh, actually, he was very much involved in a lot of this that now that we're finding out and it's like, Oh fuck, whether they knew it or not, they're like, Oh, now everything's there's a spotlight on it. And now we have to be worried. And I think that's kind of what's happening here. Well, let me tell you, there's something that uh, this, this tweet here, it says MAGA month begins. He tweeted this this morning. Number one, uh, Tim pool got up early in the morning uh, in Maryland on the East coast to, tweet I mean, that's, out. that's six thirty seven your time. That's five thirty seven his right. time. That's what I'm saying. He was, I up mean, really yeah, look, early. Alpha cucks got to wake up early right. dog. The other thing too here, I think uh, says more about uh, Tim pool than maybe anything is he tweeted this from an Android phone. It really, yeah. I mean, yeah, he would definitely, I'm not, I'm not trying to denigrate any Android users out there, but I am. Apple is superior. <laughs> I mean, it, I'm an Apple Twitter, supremacist. Yeah. Twitter, yeah. Twitter does, uh, they, they will put your shit on blast, you know, whether you know it or not. Um, and you know, no offense to the green bubbles, you know, but, uh, I prefer the blue bubble messages, uh, you know, I can react, tap back, do all the stuff in there. Right, right. I can't yeah. really do that in Android. Uh, we so. we are here here at the Tony Michaels podcast. We uh, fortunately Apple are elitists. Fortunate. We are Apple elitists. Uh, but but here he says, uh, MAGA month begins. So everyone, um, because I'm going to put that his tweet sucks. Obviously here because his tweet does suck. But mm-hmm. I'm also going to quote tweet him here so you guys can go find this. I don't normally do this, but I figure I figure this would work. Uh, make sure. To put your Cheeto dust knee pads on him. Okay. I'm just I'm just saying, make sure you put your Cheeto dust knee pads on Tim. Yeah. So I'm gonna tweet I'm gonna quote tweet this so you guys can go find it. And don't do don't do what the MAGA Month Patriots want you to do and go quote tweet something very mm-hmm. Very, very not patriotic. Let, uh, Tim. let Tim Pool the fool. Yeah, know your thoughts. I, I don't know. You know, it's it is it is Maga month, so let him go know what you think of Maga month. Right, <laughs> Tim Pool. Um, he did he did win our Alpha Cuck of the week and Bonehead of the week. So thanks, Timmy. Thanks. I guess mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, so let's get and if back- this is and and somebody mentioned this in the chat and this could be true I wouldn't you know I wouldn't be surprised that July is you know uh, White History Month or MAGA Month or whatever as a dig at Juneteenth that just happened 
in June. Yeah, I think actually uh, um, Patriot, Patriot takes. Um, and I, I uh, let, let's. I, I think I can find something on that. Yeah. We, 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 Alpha Cuck actually to come full circle here. We, you coined the phrase here on Bonehead of the Week, mm-hmm. Alpha Cuck, um, many many months ago. And the reason why was because of an Alpha Cuck himself, mm-hmm. uh, Ethan Schmidt. Um, and here is the video. Let's let's play this. Oh um, God, yeah. Talk about a a, a Tim Pool wannabe type thing here. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, he's on TikTok. I don't know how they still. I don't know. See, I can't figure out how he can still post on TikTok with some of this stuff. I don't know. But here is here is uh, uh, the Alpha Cuck himself um, talking about White History Month and how this MAGA MAGA month is turning out for them. Let's listen. Ethan Schmidt, president of the Anti-Maskers Club, this July. White History Month. Yep. Well, let me ask you: Do you think what is he slurping? Do you do you, don't answer that. Do you have any? Do you have any kind of clue why he's an incel? It it's it, it, real, come on, this guy. Look, he's he's not an well here. To be an incel, you have to intentionally oh, invol- be celibate. Yeah, right, 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 right. So. There's this thing where it's like, oh yeah, incels, incels. You know, you're making a dig at them. But is it this that... intentional? I mean, he's projecting. No, no, this not at all. I don't think intention? so. Like, I mean, like it's he's a dig. Yeah, he's I think it's just douchey. a fucking dick that nobody wants to be around. Like, he's probably got fucking his his mouth smells like ass. It's fucking rank. Uh, his mustache looks like it's a, a worn down toothbrush bristles. He looks like he wants to be. Uh, a pirate or in a western of some sort but he didn't quite make the casting call i'm like this is the guy but when we say incel like obviously it's a dig at them but the other part of it is that it's intentional and i don't think for these motherfuckers that it's intentional i think these guys actually try to get laid actually try to go on dates actually use dating apps and try to meet someone they can't and they cannot get a date they cannot get laid they could not even if they wanted to intentionally date someone well, Everyone's let me like, let nah, me fuck that. let me give you the proof of why that is true. Let's listen. Yes, it is White History Month this July. You know, we need to take back our white culture. We need to let all the savages know. All the savages. We need to let them know who built this country. It was the white folks, the white settlers, the white pilgrims. We built this country. We settled this country. You know, all the best. Okay, I can't take it. I can't yeah, take it anymore. Right, it's just it. a yeah. fucking nonsense. Couldn't even get half white. That guy is a. And, there, and that there is where few, that is where Alpha Cuck came from. Yeah, was that, that? he he is the reason that I yep. whatever you know and kind of randomly said Alpha Cuck in that moment. I mean, after he got fucking owned by that right, teenager right. who was asking for uh, signatures, but um, Ethan Schmidt. Like there are there are very few people in this world that are like mm, really 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 hate or like if I saw them on the street I would you know I won't say it anyway. We'll just say it. We'll just leave it there. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> we'll just leave it there. You're saying you saying or you may or may not be saying that he has a very punchable face. That's what yeah, I mean. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm well, just saying like you know, speaking it's, of the faces, face would be enough. Speaking of anyway. faces that uh, could or could not be punchable, um, we uh, we get back to the the boneheads of the week. Justice Clarence Thomas, he is our winner of the bonehead of the week um, for many many reasons here. But what was the reason why? What was the main reason why you wanted uh, Clarence on the list here? Can you, I just can think that he now? has done a excellent job of putting his name for shittiest person with a lot of power uh, in the last couple of weeks. Whether it's you know trying to, even though they didn't take the case uh, of uh, you know religious freedom with vaccines, but he tried to say that you know vaccines uh, came from aborted babies. You know, taking away the rights of of women, their their bodily autonomy, and then saying, "Oh, while we're at it, we might as well look at contraception or same sex marriage." You know, and this Real, moment, really going down the road of even even infringing on his right to be in an interracial marriage, right? Yet. Like he didn't he didn't say it, but I guarantee someone is gonna bring it up later, right. and they're gonna based say, on his language exactly, that he, that he right? Wrote. And like. You know, whether it's the gun rights, the Miranda rights, like these are all things that in the last week and a half, you know, it, it's it's like I said on Twitter, I said it's not just the Republican motto of uh, of whatever her dumbass name that she lost her her primary by. But it was 
It was guns, babies, Jesus, right? Like that is also the campaign slogan for the Republican Party, as well as, hey, hey, climate, go fuck yourself. But like those are in the last week and a half, they've done so much destruction that we have done so much progress for over the last 50 years. They wiped it. The, they wiped it away in a week. And that's the that's the, that's the that's the Supreme Court that we have here. It's not a supreme. It's inferior. It is religious. It is Christian nationalism in and of itself. Uh, Rex Chapman posted Candace, it. Candace Taylor. Thank you. Someone in the chat said Candace Taylor. I yes. couldn't remember her name, but she fucking lost her primary. And yeah, that's great. in Georgia. And yeah, then yeah. She, she was like, oh, it's rigged. I got right. I got. It's like you barely the got <laughs> a vote. <laughs> oh, my God. You barely got a vote. So Rex Chapman posts uh, this uh, clip of Clarence Thomas at his 1991 confirmation hearing where he quotes, I believe the Constitution protects the right to privacy because that's the heart of Roe v. Wade. When they made the decision of Roe v. Wade, the heart of it is the right to privacy of you and your doctor making decisions about your body, your privacy. Um, and then he, uh, Rex goes on to write, Clarence Thomas in 2022 abortion decision. The Constitution gives you no right to privacy. Here is the clip from 1991 of Judge Clarence Thomas talking about Roe v. Wade and what he would do and not do for a decision. And may he may or may not have perjured himself here. Let's listen. I believe the Constitution protects the right to privacy. And I have no reason or agenda to prejudge the issue or to predispose to rule one way or the other on the issue of abortion, which is a difficult issue. I'm not asking you. So there you have it. Clarence Thomas uh, said that he would not would not make a decision based on. Uh, abortion he would base it on the constitution of right. people's right to but privacy the, the even more important than just abortion he said he would not go after a privacy related issue right, which, which may are or may not be who you fuck and who you love right exactly well I, rather he changed his mind which i believe is far-fetched that he changed his mind or he just lied to get on the supreme no, court yeah yeah um, you said you you say it's you know it's like when you're going on a date with someone, you're trying to get into a relationship, you're, you might, you know, be your better self. You might get in better shape. You might say things that, you know, you wouldn't normally kind of uh, agree to, you know. And then once you've been in that relationship long enough and you've kind of show little cracks along the way of lying and doing this and doing that, then you're like, oh, yeah, well, this is just who I am. <laughs> Guys, I said, fuck it. And that's what they're doing right now. And, and Ginny Thomas is... 100% behind that. I have a very difficult time believing that any sort of discussion happened at the dinner table where she did not talk about January 6th. She did not talk about making Trump still in office, not wanting to anoint Joe Biden. And Clarence Thomas like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. It's a long game, but we'll get to it. Fucking piece of shit. Uh, Clarence Thomas, our bonehead of the week. Let's give him his due here. So there you have it, folks. The bone end of the week. Justice Clarence Thomas. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. Mm -hmm. Hard, hard, hard. Fuck the bought and paid for fascist Supreme Court. The Christian nationalist that are taking away our rights. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. Uh, again, every single week we have the bone end of the week poll. Go to at Tony Michaels pod on Twitter. Follow us there for the bone end of the week poll every single week. And don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube, the, the Tony Michaels podcast, where you can not only vote for bone end of the week, but you can watch the bone end of the week breakdown in the second hour every single Friday, because we broadcast every single Friday bone end of the week in the second hour. And we also, we also download this episode every single Sunday. So don't miss Bone End of the Week every single week mm -hmm. on the Tony Michaels podcast. Stick around. We got some an announcements right after the song. Mm -hmm. 